All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time at this uh, 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 moment in, in history <laughs> to participate in this conversation about the Open Ed Conference. Uh, we're really uh, pleased to have such a great group here uh, and also really excited that uh, many community members took the time to uh, report in before the call and, and may do so after the call through uh, Menti to share their thoughts. Uh, I'm Nicole Allen, Director of Open Education for Spark, a member of the Open Ed Conference Steering Committee on the call. We have uh, most of the steering committee members uh, uh, who are joining us uh, who will be contributing throughout the conversation. And uh, we also have uh, uh, more than 50 attendees. And uh, please uh, feel free to contribute in the chat. And uh, we'll be using a tool called Menti uh, throughout the conversation to gather audience input. So to run through a quick agenda, the purpose of this call is just the, the first uh, opportunity for those of us that have been uh, working to organize the Open Ed Conference uh, for 2020 and beyond uh, to uh, give an update on how things are going and uh, open a conversation about uh, some of the important next steps. So we'll start out uh, with an exercise in Menti uh, led by a steering committee member, Amy Tan, and uh, then we'll transition into some updates uh, focused on bringing us up to speed on the process so far, uh, where we're at on, on dates and venue and uh, responding to COVID, and then some next steps in the planning process and community engagement. And then uh, we'll take a few questions uh, and uh, have steering committee members weigh in. And then we'll go back into to Menti and uh, have a few questions for discussion, uh, gathering input on, on different perspectives on open education at large and then specifically for the conference. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to turn it now to uh, Amy to tell us a little bit about Mentimeter and how to get logged in. Hello everybody, I'm Amy Tan and I'm from Houston Community College and um, I'm going to walk you through Mentimeter. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to understand your thoughts and hear, hear what you have to share. We're, we're collecting the information so that people who logged in early their information will be combined with the live responses that we receive during the, the webinar and then on, um, or this conference call. And then we will keep it open for a couple of days and then we're going to share out all that information in a couple of weeks. So we're really pleased to use this platform to hear what you have to share with us. We really recommend that you use two separate devices so that you can view the presentation on one device and have Menti open on the other. I prefer to use my phone for Menti. You can go to menti.com and then you will enter the code 677317 and that information is on the screen for you. Um, you may be asked to enable cookies. If that is an issue, please open the chat. Lee Miller is gonna give you information on that in the chat. Uh, I want to remind everybody that as we're moving along, there's going to be a, a ask a question that you can click on at any point. You'll be able to see the questions. You can like the questions to promote them up to the top. And we're going to be responding to those questions throughout the presentation. And so I think if you can, if you're already into Minty and enter that code, then you should be able to join. And I think we'll move on to our first question. So we just want to get an idea of, of who's joining us today. Um, so just give us an idea of where you live and to your state, your US state, your Canadian province, or your country. And we're going to see the results here popping up as a word cloud. Wow, look at that. Look at all the representation we have. Maybe we can get all 50 states on there and, and multiple provinces and countries. I see Georgia and Texas, California. Wonderful. Well, we welcome all of you to this conversation. 
and we'll move on to the next question. So just to help you get um, adjusted to, to menti.com, we were just, we want to be sensitive to, to the, the gravity of the situation that we're experiencing, but we also want those of you who feel you can to engage in a lighthearted way and respond to this question and let us know which of these images best reflects your stay at home experience right now. Alrighty, it looks like people are staying busy. Lots of people working on the computer. Um, and that, that cat on the hamster wheel is appealing to, to many of us. Wonderful. Okay, it looks like you guys have the hang of Menti. We'll move along to our next question. So just to get an idea of who's joining us today, um, if you could pick, you, you can pick up to three of these options. How would you describe your role? How do you see yourself in the open community? So go ahead and, and pick three of those. Give everybody a, a chance to make your selections. And we can see, look at that beautiful rainbow. We have lots of librarians joining us. And many of us, probably most of us, see ourselves as advocates. Excellent. Well, we welcome you all to the conversation. We'll move on to our next question. So just to have an idea of how many times you have attended the Open Ed Conference. So if you can just let us know. It looks like we are kind of in the middle there. Um, we have lots of, of people who've never attended and we welcome your voices to the conversation. So, excellent. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Actually, here's where I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole to get us started on the information part. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Amy. And I uh, just to re reiterate what Amy said earlier, um, uh, you should have uh, on your uh, Menti device uh, a, a link where you can ask questions or add questions if, if you'd like to throughout this conversation. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to move into a quick update on sort of where things stand, where things started and where things stand. And uh, it's, it's really wonderful that there's such a range of uh, participants in this conversation, people who've, who've never been uh, to the Open Ed Conference and want to help shape the future of, of what, what carries on. Uh, and, and those who've been attending for, uh, you know, more than a decade. So uh, I want to just provide a, a brief overview of uh, what happened over the past, uh, I guess, four months since, five months since the uh, Open Ed 19. Uh, just for those who hadn't been uh, uh, following that conversation, so uh, the, the Open Education Conference is uh, an annual conference that happens uh, uh, typically in North America uh, every year. Uh, for 16 years, the conference was organized by Dr. David Wiley, uh, whose name may be familiar to many of you. And uh, uh, after last year's or during last year's conference, uh, David made an announcement that uh, Open Ed 19 was going to be the final uh, annual open education conference he would organize. And uh, this left space for the community to uh, have an opportunity to decide what we wanted our annual gathering to look like uh, and if we wanted an annual gathering and uh, you know ask questions like you know what what are we as a community or multiple communities uh, or, or networks and uh, the uh, conversations that that grew out of that uh, were important to thinking about the future of not only the, the conference, but also open education at large. But one theme did emerge during the conference, uh, which is a, a, a number of different conversations happened there about uh, uh, sort of what comes next. And uh, one of those conversations yielded a form uh, that people could fill out and just share thoughts about the future of open ed. And, um, the responses, while they uh, included a, a range of perspectives, uh, there was a general consensus that uh, having a, a, a generally North American based annual conference on open education was still important and valuable to many of the people who were part of uh, the, the group attending this conference. Uh, 
So following that, conversations continued and um, a, a group of community members got together and produced uh, an open letter and call for participation uh, that uh, uh, we pushed out to the community and uh, invited those who were interested in being part of a planning process for open ed or making sure that it happens to step forward. And uh, I, I know I see just from looking at the, the list of attendees that, um, uh, you know, many of you participated in this process and, and, and stepped forward to help out, which is fantastic. And uh, it, it created an opportunity for those who were <laughs> interested in driving things forward to connect and, and talk about next steps. And uh, the uh, collaboration uh, that came together uh, out of this process uh, was um, between uh, these four organizations, um, my organization, SPARC, uh, OpenStax, uh, the Colorado Department of Higher Education and their OER Council, and the University of System of Maryland's uh, Kerwin Center, uh, which runs the Maryland Open Source Textbook Project. And uh, together, uh, we recognized that, that there was an opportunity for, um, with our, our powers combined, to be able to support uh, some next steps for the Open Ed Conference. And we put together a proposal to the community for uh, uh, what, what we would commit to do. And uh, it is a, a commitment for a, a two-year process to organize uh, Open Ed 2020 and 2021, uh, working with the community and uh, creating space for the important conversations that need to happen about what needs to happen uh, after 2021. And uh, the um, community uh, has an opportunity to really define uh, what we want this convening to be, how it's governed, how it's organized, how decisions are made. And uh, this is the, the beginning of that process. So uh, the first step that we took coming out of that proposal after sending it out and consulting it with the community, and, and you know, again, I see many of you on, on, in this conversation uh, supported that, that idea and helped, helped us move forward. Uh, we, uh, our first step was to form a steering committee. And uh, most of the steering committee is on the call today. Um, the, the two who are not is Akanksha Batnagar, who's the student body president at the University of Alberta, and uh, Danielle Hyatt, who's um, based at an institution in Pakistan, uh, where it is very late. <laughs> um, are uh, uh, the members of the steering committee are here and uh, are going to be joining the conversation as we move forward. Um, so we put out an open call for uh, nominations and uh, went through a staged process to, to put together this group of uh, amazing individuals um, from a much broader pool of amazing individuals. Uh, and really focused in on um, making sure that there were lots of different perspectives represented um, uh, from uh, different types of institutions and um, demographics and, and geographic representation. And, uh, you know, I, I really want to just stress that, that, that all of these people are, um, have committed to spend uh, at least four to eight hours a month for, for the next year, even in light of COVID. Um, uh, to support this process and uh, they um, just thank you to all of you guys <laughs> for being amazing and um, you know the conversations that that we've had so far are wonderful and I'm really excited um, uh, to work with you and uh, everybody else uh, who's part of this process going forward. All right. So I am going to stop there and uh, hand it over to Daniel Williamson from OpenStax, who's going to share with us an update on the, the dates and venue for the conference in light of COVID. All right. Thanks so much, Nicole. Um, yeah, and thank you to everybody who's on the call. I'm really excited about the opportunity that we have for Open Ed and reimagining it. Um, and so I'm going to just provide a quick update on our venue. Um, so in the time before 
coronavirus. Open Ed was conceived as being an important in-person event. Uh, and so with all this planning, of course, uh, we were able to secure a venue in Denver at the Hyatt Regency Denver uh, at Colorado Convention Center for the week of November 9th. Um, so, of course, things have progressed a lot since then, and shortly after executing the contract, uh, our situation has changed fairly dr drastically, as I'm sure you all can attest. So we recognize that, you know, COVID-19 and the resulting economic downturn has placed an enormous fiscal pressure on colleges, universities, and schools around the country. Um, and that this might make it difficult for many in our community to secure the travel funds that are necessary uh, to travel if we are even permitted to travel come November. Um, so right now, um, and in fact today, uh, Nicole and I had a call with the, the Hyatt. We're in discussions with them to determine, you know, what our options are. Um, we want to be as flexible as possible, um, and we want to determine, you know, what flexibility our contract will allow us um, with, the, with the Hyatt um, because we recognize that this, this is, these are really uncertain times um, and we might not have the ability to meet in person come November. Um, and so we're going to be sending out a survey um, to all of the previous open ed attendees um, and other community members asking about the likelihood that they would be able to attend in person, you know, given their institution's current situation. Um, this information is going to help us make decisions about how to proceed in terms of either canceling the venue or maintaining the venue and adjusting the size uh, um, and reducing the space that we're holding. Um, also, you know, I, I lead an organization and the, one of the things that I tell the organization is that when I know something, you'll know something. And so as this is rapidly kind of advancing, um, as soon as we have more information about the venue, about the opportunities, um, I'll share that with uh, you all, as well as the broader community, uh, to make sure we're really um, you know, aligned and informed about what's going on. Additionally, um, we're immediately beginning planning to support the conference through an online experience. Um, so regardless of which route we go, whether it's in-person, online or some sort of hybrid, um, I think this is going to be a, an amazing event. We have plenty of time to figure it all out. And I, I personally remain very optimistic that we will be able to host some amazing hybrid in-person online event. However, you know, being from Houston and very familiar with hurricanes, uh, I recognize that the cone of uncertainty uh, for the, what, what the fall holds in store for us is still very, very wide. Um, so nonetheless, you know, this is a time in history where more than ever our society needs an open, robust, and more equitable education system. And the open ed community is uniquely positioned to usher in the solutions to the problems that we are facing today. So I'm sure regardless of whether we are meeting in person in November or online in November or some mix, we'll have a lot to share and a lot to learn in November. So I'm now going to turn it over to um, Spencer Ellis um, from the Colorado Department of Higher Education, who's acting as our local host for 2020, um, uh, to talk a little bit more about Denver uh, and the venue. Thanks, Daniel. <clears throat> um, yes, I love I love the term terminology that you used, um, ushering in solutions, and I do think that that's the role that open education can and will play. Um, as we move higher education and all forms of education forward um, with our new reality. So um, we in Colorado are super excited to help in any fashion. Um, and on behalf of the state of Colorado, the Colorado Department of Higher Education and our OER Council, which is our OER champions here in the state that kind of dictate the work that we do from a statewide perspective, we're ready to support in any way no matter the delivery method that is chosen, and we trust this community and Syrian community to make the appropriate decision um, that's in the best interest of all those participating. So really inspired to see how many people have turned out for this particular phone call and hoping people will remain engaged as we continue moving forward for planning um, in 2020, 2021, and beyond. And with that, I would like to turn it over to MJ Bishop uh, from the University of Maryland system. 
Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this is MJ Bishop with the University System of Maryland. Um, we are excited about 2021, um, figuring this will be post COVID, hopefully knocking wood. Um, obviously, we haven't been able to do what we had been hoping to do right now in terms of visiting venues and starting to make some decisions about where the 2021 conference will be specifically, but the idea is for us to be in the Washington DC area and to be at the ready after um, the elections to have great conversations in the DC area with policymakers and others about the great work that you all are doing in the OER space. So. Stay tuned, uh, plans will be forthcoming, um, but unfortunately we're a little bit further behind than we had hoped to be, obviously with that planning at this point. Yeah. Thanks MJ, uh, Daniel and Spencer. Uh, it's been uh, awesome working <laughs> with all of you. And, um, you know, we certainly didn't expect this when we set out, but, um, you know, I, I, Daniel's comments also really resonated with me. Uh, about um, you know making making this uh, really the best event that it can be and thinking beyond uh, what it's it's ever been before so all right so moving on um, now that we've covered uh, the how we got there and where we're at on on sort of how we're holding the conference I want to move on to discussing the next steps in the planning process and uh, engaging more community members in, in the broader process. So I, I wanted to turn it over here to uh, Ethan Senak um, and Lee Miller, who are on the steering committee, to uh, share uh, a little bit more about what's in store there. All right, thanks, Nicole. Um, this is Lee Miller with Barton Community College. Um, and we want, to, uh, we want to note that we recognize the need for community involvement, uh, as well as the amount of work needing to be completed for this conference and the future of open ed as a whole. So the steering committee uh, has created groups to open community participation and we'll be sending out an invitation for community membership or uh, members to volunteer to serve on one of these groups. Um, we will be asking for applications so that volunteers and their skills and talents align with the needs of the groups. Uh, these groups support various aspects of organizing the conference and the future of open ed. All groups will comprise of a combination of the steering committee and selected community members. Um, our aim is to establish a diverse community voice across all groups, as well as be able to execute the deliverables that each group will need to uh, be uh, able to accomplish. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Ethan so that he can kind of go through that list and uh, some brief description of what those groups are. Awesome. Thank you, Lee. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ethan. I work with ISME, which is the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. Um, you may know us better by OER Commons, which is the big platform that we run. <clears throat> So uh, as we mentioned, these are, I'm going to just really briefly run through the basic groups that we see helping organize and plan this conference. Um, we'll be following up with folks, uh, providing an opportunity to share your interest to participate in each of these with more information as well. So don't feel like you need to write it all down as I go. Um, the first group that we see is the program group. Um, this one is relatively self-explanatory in its nature. We imagine it will be the largest group, um, but it'll be responsible for the construction and execution of the, the program. So reviewing, uh, coordinating the review of, of proposals and uh, establishing the tracks, all of that stuff. Um, the online conference group. So as Daniel and Nicole both mentioned, we are planning for the contingency that this conference may be fully online, but we sort of regardless of whether or not there's an in-person event, we want to offer a robust online participation option. So this group would be responsible for helping plan the online components of, of Open Ed 2020. <clears throat> the third group is the future of Open Ed. So as we mentioned, sort of uh, this group sees ourselves as, as stewarding the conference for, for a couple of years while helping build structures that allow the community to own it more fully in the future. Um, so the future of open ed group will focus on uh, research, design, structuring open ed in the longer term. Um, the fourth group is, our, is a 
group focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, this is something that we see as intrinsic and essential to the conference and to our work more broadly. Um, so we believe it's, it's worthwhile to have a committee or a group um, working with the other conference planning groups and uh, integrating this more fully into the, into the conference. Um, the fifth group is our communications group. Um, this one also relatively self-explanatory, but working on things around the website, uh, managing community outreach, uh, keeping us on track with timeline, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we also have a conference policy group, so we care deeply about having uh, an effective code of conduct, establishing a policy that creates a safe environment uh, and a space where people can come with their full selves to share um, their, their thoughts and, and what they're working on. Um, so um, a group to work on the various policies and rules for the conference. <clears throat> and then the last two groups are just a local hosting group. Um, this will be primarily folks uh, in the location and, and logistic oriented folks um, for the venue, managing location and travel information, setting up social events, uh, and managing on-site volunteers. Uh, and then finally, obviously, we a, a group of folks to uh, support all of these other committees. The volunteers are not a group of their own, but they'd be helping uh, review uh, proposals for the conference, managing things on site, and, and helping sort of intersperse throughout all of the different needs. Um, so those are the seven groups. We'll be sharing these out again with everybody in the near future with an opportunity to kind of share your interest and, and express where you'd like to participate. And I'm going to throw it back over to Lee to just wrap us up on that. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Ethan. Um, so yeah, look for more information on each, uh, each of those groups uh, when the invitation comes out. You can see that there. Um, the steering committee will be sending out an invitation for community members to sign up for planning groups. Um, a process for group selection will be developed if there are more signups uh, than there are available spots. Um, and we will also keep in mind what voices we might be, might be missing um, or need to hear from. So um, our hope is to send the invitation out next week and we'll have uh, groups hopefully start in um, meetings in May. And I will send it back over to Nicole. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Lee and Ethan. Uh, all right. So we're going to be taking, uh, just taking a pause for questions in a bit. If you can use uh, Mentimeter to ask questions or just stick them in the chat, please feel free. Um, but uh, uh, just wanted to cover a, a few quick things first. Um, so just want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, yes, we will be setting up a, a website and social media presence and um, do more to sort of promote what's happening. I think uh, we've approached this very, very carefully, um, just sort of recognizing that we are still ramping up the, uh, the, the community engagement and participation in the process and didn't want to get too far ahead. We really prioritize getting the steering committee up and running and, uh, you know, these conversations, uh, which is really the most important part. And uh, we'll be working on, on more of the, the communications piece first uh, soon, uh, uh, as you know, with uh, the communication group that's being formed. Um, so uh, also just want to note that we'll be scheduling these uh, meetings regularly going forward. Um, uh, this isn't the only one and uh, we really will be prioritizing these conversations about the, the future of open ed, you know, especially at a time of uncertainty, focusing in on the things that, you know, you definitely can control and want to do <laughs> uh, can be really helpful. And um, just want to note that, that that's definitely going to be a priority going forward. All right, so I see a few questions popping in and I am going to see if I can um, show all of the questions so that everybody can see them. Um, am I able to pop this out? I don't think I am. But all right, so before we start uh, in on questions, uh, I just wanted to actually take a pause while people are people are asking questions. 
uh, to see if any other steering committee members who, who haven't said something yet uh, wanted to jump in and reflect on anything that we've discussed so far or, or share any sentiments. This is, this is Daniel. Um, I know I've already spoken. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I failed to specify that that was okay, but um, please feel free. So one thing that I think is really important is that, uh, to emphasize that this is twofold, um, the, the work that we're, we're, we're working on here. Uh, one part of it is just hosting the event for the next two years. But I think perhaps the more important uh, part of this work is really figuring out what open ed as a conference and potentially as a community looks like um, in terms of self-governance. And so I think a lot of um, the work um, that we should be thinking about and thinking about how we participate is in that second bucket. Um, of course, there's a lot of tactical work that's necessary to get the conference off the ground for the next two years. But I think really um, the big lift is going to be figuring out what the future looks like. All right. So looking at the question so far, it does seem like there, uh, the top question <laughs> is whether uh, the, there is a plan for the conference to go virtual um, and uh, offer some sessions virtually. And I think we've already answered that in, in terms of, uh, you know, making sure that, that we do have that contingency plan and uh, forming the online conference group that's going to look into what a, what a hybrid or, or online conference looks like. Um, so here's the next question. Uh, do we plan to follow the scheduling formats of previous open ed conference or do we anticipate changes? And if so, what changes? Does anyone want to jump in on that? Um, this is Ethan. I, I'm speaking solely for myself here and not members of the steering committee. Um, but I would, I, my immediate answer is uh, I have no idea <laughs> yet. Um, I, I, I know that there were sort of a variety of pros and cons with the way um, proposals were reviewed in, in previous iterations of open ed. Um, so I think this is something that we honestly would love to hear more from the community about. Um, there, you know, there are sort of variety of combinations or ways it could be structured. We haven't uh, uh, dove deeply into those yet. I'm sure that's something that the program committee will, will be thinking about and, and weighing, um, but <clears throat> we would love to have input from the community on that. Mm -hmm. And this is Amy and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ethan, I, I would encourage everyone to, um, if, if you have an interest, to please join that, that program committee and, um, and give us your, your preferences and your ideas. There are a couple of other program related questions in here. One about indicating whether proposals uh, are commercial in the applications process or in the proposal review process. Uh, and that's definitely something for the, for the program group to consider um, a great idea uh, to save um, for uh, later in the session <laughs> um, to add to the list. Uh, and uh, in terms of the, the financial structure of an online conference, um, that's a really excellent question. It's something that we have thought about, but um, don't have a budget for. Uh, and I think that's going to be the, the, you know, the first step in the conversation. All right. So um, I think we're, where are we at in time? Oh no, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> um, so with where we're at on time, I think we're gonna move forward uh, into the rest of the, the Mentimeter conversation because I think a lot of the things that are showing up in questions are actually 
um, uh, you know, good things to talk about and, and add into some of the questions that, that we have coming up. But I want to reiterate that if you have questions, please put them in here and we are more, more than happy to uh, provide responses to them. Uh, all right. So Amy, I am going to turn it back to you for the next question. So we're going to get back going with menti.com and there's the code. If you, if you need the code, I think everybody's using the, the, the menti um, quite effectively and it, it's really wonderful for us. So just to get us back into the mode, what, what kind of conference goer are you? looks like we've already got some responses there and the top response is work. It looks like work, work, work and also mind blown. I see a couple of party animals there. So wonderful. Okay, we can move to the next question and I'm gonna turn it over to Tiffany Reardon. Oh no. Hey everyone, I am Tiffany Reardon from uh, Affordable Learning Georgia. And um, so we've, you guys already got a glimpse of this question before I started talking. <laughs> so um, if open education is a means to an end, what end is most important to you? So um, it, I guess um, what's kind of like an end goal of open education for you? I'm seeing some student success equity, engagement, access, pedagogy. I just want to jump in and remind everybody that we're going to share this data out again at a later date. So we will make it available for everyone to see all of the responses. Seems like um, a pretty a pretty common theme here is accessibility, but I think we all have um, our own thoughts as far as um, that means to an end. So let's uh, move forward. So um, tell us what you would like to see the open education community do. So this is beyond just the conference. Um, what do you want to see the community doing or focusing on um, or maybe not doing any more um, or things that we're already doing, but like we should continue, that kind of thing. So we've got um, so got some pedagogy in here, which is good, because if that's an end goal, we should probably work towards it. Um, collaboration, definitely. Openness. There's a lot of collaboration here. Research. Cool, so we've got some pretty pretty good ideas of what we want this community to be doing. So let's keep moving. Okay, um, so what about an annual open education gathering is important to you? So um, we're thinking about um, like wh what is, what's the importance of having an annual conference or an annual event for our community? So we've got some connection, networking, sharing ideas, a lot about connection and networking. Cool. Okay. So let's keep going. Okay, 
So um, if you had to pick three words or phrases, um, what, again, what would you choose to see reflected in the open ed conference values? another word cloud. These ones are so fun. So there's a lot of inclusion here. Definitely because that's the biggest word. See in diversity, equity, open minded, collaboration. There's some really good points here. Some of these smaller words are pretty interesting too. Um, like research, qualitative and quantitative, flexible, got some good points here. Okay, let's keep, uh, keep going. Okay. So um, given the values that you would like to see in the Open Ed Conference, um, what topics would you like to see reflected in the program? Okay. Community-based OER, Creation, promotion and tenure, that is definitely something that I hear a lot about. H5P is so much fun. Open Education Week activities, that would be cool to feature. Tiffany, I'm also seeing sustainability pop up in several, several of the comments. Yeah, definitely. Diversity and equity too. Yeah. And Head open in light of COVID. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, how how open can advance diver diversity and equity in light of open? I saw that before it <laughs> slid up, and I think that's really really important thinking about the crisis that we're we're currently facing and how openness can. Um, be a strategy for addressing that, but also making sure that through open practices, we're not inadvertently replicating um, some of the uh, legacy structures that are uh, inequitable. Yeah, I also saw leadership just disappear, and that's a good one too. Policy, some good. Fails. Oh, that's a good topic. I would I would go to a presentation on OER fails. Okay. Okay, so let's um let's go ahead and keep moving. Okay, um so how uh, in light of the COVID-19 um and how it's affecting the world. How is your institution or organization planning ahead for the fall? Um, do you expect to be able to attend events? Um, do you have, uh, I don't know, specific rules or policies or like new um, guidelines that you're following? I'm seeing a lot of unknown. No in-person travel, decreased travel funds. Definitely a lot of unknown. Okay. We're seeing a lot of um, need for online options, virtual conference options. Okay. Okay, this is really helpful. Okay. 
a lot of kind of like unknown, but assuming or guessing, and that's probably um, probably a good idea to kind of try to project forward on what to expect. Um, okay, so let's let's keep going, but this is really helpful. All right, and Tiffany, this is this is our last uh, mentee question. Yes. So, um, with this last opportunity to kind of add, aside from asking questions, which you can do um, all the way through the end, um, with this last opportunity to um, give us your thoughts, um, what other ideas or feedback would you like to share for the Open Ed Conference? Do you want to click show results? There we go. Okay, so we want to definitely see virtual attendance. Criticism should be encouraged and not avoided. Unstructured unconference was neat. I wasn't there for that, but that's kind of a cool idea. Okay. This is um, Jasmine Roberts, faculty at Ohio State, and I really like the point about how we can make sure that we're not preaching to the choir. That's not exactly what that person mentioned, but I think that is something that we should consider in the open ed community. How are we just not hearing some of the same voices and how do we get folks in who are perhaps not as familiar with open ed or you know have never heard of open ed how do we get those voices into our community as well so i think that was an excellent point made yeah definitely bringing in the new voices um. i just want to remind everybody that when this is over we're going to reset the settings so that you can go back in to Menti and add more comments or reflections or things you'd like to share, especially for the open ended questions. Yeah, and I think we're going to leave this slide open for a little while and just um, take, take a moment to uh, open it up to members of the steering committee based on uh, what you've seen in the conversation so far reflecting on any of these ideas or trends or uh, values and in, in what you're hoping to see come out of the conference and thank you jasmine for uh, what you shared Um, I, this is Ethan. I was just going to turn it back around really quickly and say um, I'm really appreciative of all the folks who are sharing stuff through Menti. I'm just, I was looking kind of at the numbers of submissions on even these open-ended questions and I'm seeing like 40 to 50 to 60 different people uh, adding in comments and everything. So, and, and I think that speaks to, you know, how passionately this community cares about building community. And I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, continue to foster that uh, in, in the years ahead. And, and I'm just wanted to sort of recognize and say I'm grateful for all the folks who are contributing thoughts and stuff right now. This is Emily Reagan from MSU Denver, and I'm seeing interest in maker sessions or, or times for people to get together and do some creation um, during the conference, which sounds exciting. This is Lee Miller. Um, with all the, the comments and to kind of bounce off what Ethan said, I just really encourage everybody to really consider when the uh, invitation for those groups come out to, to really look and see what uh, is going to kind of spark your interest and um, you know if you have the time to put 
put your name out there so that you can continue to voice um, and provide a voice for those interests that you have and, and share your skills and talents for, um, for these groups. And also to follow up with what Lee has said, um, if you have anyone in your institution that would be, um, you know, an excellent addition to um, the community, please um, encourage them to, to participate in the um, program or in any of the groups that, um, you know, we are asking you to sign up. So, and I also saw K to 12 and really um, that is one um, thing that we would like to expand on. So this is not just higher ed, but also includes our colleagues from um, K to 12. So that really is a good um, feedback from you all. This is um, Jasmine Roberts again, and I saw the point about uh, less or fewer keynotes and I think that's a really interesting um, point added into this conversation, how, you know, I've had conversations with people one-on-one -on -one and how sometimes keynotes can kind of contribute to this rock star, if you will, um, thing that sometimes goes on in our community that we hear, again, going back to the point that I was voicing earlier, we hear from the same people and the same voices. And how can we make this, this conversation a little less top down, um, you know, and more equitable and more horizontal, if you will, um, you know, so I, I actually really like that idea about fewer keynotes. Yeah, J Jasmine, I, uh, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot too, uh, and, and I'm really interested to explore that. Thanks for raising it. So other, other uh, anybody who hasn't spoken yet wanna jump in and, and share any thoughts? And um, I guess please continue to add your your feedback and, and thoughts and to hear um, you know this this whole process has been uh, uh, both extremely challenging but also incredibly liberating uh, because of the fact that there is so much opportunity here. Uh, we do have the opportunity to really reinvent this conference and or whatever it becomes uh, based on what the community decides. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, at Open Ed 19, I think a lot of us felt um, or I, I heard a lot of people reflecting similar perspectives about uh, just not knowing how to get from point A to point B or <laughs> point Z or uh, uh, whatever that the, the end would be. But uh, it's exciting to have this uh, in incredible group of people who are on the line right now willing to contribute ideas and uh, time and uh, thought in, into what the conference can become. And we just really want to underscore uh, how much it is important to, for the community to share feedback. And uh, we truly do want to hear from you. So we'd love your feedback on how this call went, <laughs> uh, whether this technology is working. Uh, uh, I know that there's some, you know, uh, some of the, the, the timing was maybe a bit challenging, but uh, is this a good way to, for you to submit feedback uh, and feel like uh, um, you're participating in, in, and able to shape the conference or are there other ideas that you have for how we might be able to, to do that together? So, uh, we 
can go ahead and uh, move to the last slide, which just has a set of links to the documents that we shared in the uh, in the slides earlier, just so everybody has them. Uh, we really want to invite everybody to participate in the process on the community discussion list. The link is there. That's where we'll, we'll be sending uh, calendar invitations and information about next steps. Um, you know, we'll also be making uh, <laughs> announcements and sharing the website once uh, things like that are up and running as well. If if you're not able to devote time to to thinking more deeply about a planning process right now, which we certainly understand. And uh, we really just hope that uh, what ends up happening in November uh, is going to be something that brings us all together and provides an opportunity uh, to uh, build the, the, the kind of connections between people that, that drive the open ed community. And uh, those of you who know me, I, I've been working in this space since I was an undergraduate student uh, uh, more than a decade and a half ago. And I truly believe that it is the connections between people that make open make the, the open education movement what it is. And uh, we have a great chance here to work together to do that. And I'm excited about it. And I know other uh, people on uh, the phone are excited about it. So um, thanks all just for taking time at this important uh, moment where, where people are grappling with lots of different challenges to join this this call and uh, I think we can leave it leave it there. I'm just gonna pause it for a second. Uh, if if anybody thinks I've forgotten anything <laughs> before we wrap up the call or anybody would like to share a final note. Hey Nicole, um, do you want to yeah. maybe answer some of the questions? Oh, are there are there more? Let's see. Ah. So I think we've addressed most of them. So the question about indicating a first and check second choice for which committee you'd like to be on, um, we'll take that back as a suggestion. I think it's a, a good idea and we'll work out some way to indicate preferences. And the plan is to send the, the participation call out um, hopefully next, next week, but it, certainly in the coming weeks. And that will go out to the community listserv. So if you're not subscribed, the link was on the page that I'm about to flip to now. All right. So I think that was all of the questions that we, we had. Um, so uh, I think we're going to leave it there. And uh, all of this information is going to be posted in the notes document. We'll post the slides, the recording, and the mentee uh, results for those who'd like to, to dig a little bit deeper into those. So uh, just in closing, I want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, we're really committed to making sure that, that open ed happens and is a valuable and enriching experience uh, and look forward to working with all of you to help shape that. And if somebody can put the link to the notes in the chat, that would be fantastic. <laughs>